What is going on everybody? Flight Mike back again with our fourth straight episode of Daily NBA News. Now before we get started man, I have to thank you all for the tremendous support you've been giving me on this Daily NBA News series. Every Daily NBA News has received more likes than its previous episode. And I've been enjoying hearing all of your thoughts and insights in the comment section down below. Before we get started, I wanted to tell anyone that's new to my channel to subscribe to this channel and here is why. I'm going to be bringing you guys daily NBA news, NBA analysis videos, player comparisons, draft analysis, anything you'd want as an NBA fan. If you are a basketball fan, then this is a channel that you may not only want to subscribe to, but you may want to hit that notification button as well. On top of that, this channel isn't all about me. I'm going to be trying to bring you guys into these videos as well. So starting from today, if you guys have any video analysis that you want to give me, all you have to do is record a 10 to 15 second clip on any any move that I'm making and send it to me on Twitter and you may be in the very next episode or any future episode of my daily NBA news videos just like my buddy Arash has been in the past two episodes and if you're already subscribed and you really want to give me even more support be sure to hit that notification button follow me on Twitter snapchat or Instagram to stay connected and without further ado we got a lot of news to get to today bro so let's start off with some LeBron James news Robert Ori says that LeBron James doesn't need more titles to top Michael Jordan we all know that there's been a crazy Michael Jordan versus LeBron James debate going on Michael Jordan has the hardware as a team player with six championship rings whereas LeBron James has so many individual accomplishments eight NBA finals appearances but not nearly as much success as Michael Jordan has had as a team player the latest to add to the debate is Robert Ori who says LeBron James doesn't need more titles to top Michael Jordan. Robert Ory told TMZ Sports that the amount of rings LeBron wins doesn't matter and that basketball is a team sport. And in a sense, I do have to agree with Robert Ory. As time progresses, the teams in the NBA Finals are only going to get better and better. LeBron detractors will always point to the fact that LeBron James had to leave to form a super team in Miami to win two rings. Or the fact that LeBron lost five NBA Finals series to state that Jordan is simply the greatest player of all time. But how about LeBron James averaging a triple-double in the most recent NBA Finals and still losing 4-1? to one? This left some of us wondering what else can LeBron James do? Another interesting statistic to notice is the fact that each of LeBron James' eight NBA Finals opponents had a better postseason net efficiency than the best team Michael Jordan has ever faced in the NBA Finals. James is only 32 years old and still has time to draw closer to Jordan's six Larry O'Brien trophies in the latter portion of his career. But things probably won't get any easier if the Warriors continue to be there waiting for him in the finals. Personally, as a LeBron detractor myself, I do have to agree with Robert Ori. Growing up with Kobe Bryant versus LeBron James arguments dominating my youth, I've always tried to find a way to take away from LeBron James' accomplishments. But the fact of the matter is that LeBron is simply playing in one of the most competitive eras of the NBA. And no matter how dominant he is by himself, no one person can carry his team to a championship. And it would be unfair to LeBron to say that Jordan is simply better because he has more championships. So in a sense, I do have to agree with Robert Ori, but I know that this is a very hot topic and a very controversial topic at that as well. So what are your guys' take on this? If you think I'm wrong, tell me why, because I would love to see your guys' perspective. Is Jordan better than LeBron because he has more championships? Do you feel that Jordan's career was more competitive than LeBron's? Do LeBron's five NBA Finals losses tarnish his legacy at all? Let me know in the comment section down below. Now guys, you know every video I have one topic I can't wait to talk about and in this video, it's this very topic. In one of the more shocking ways for a superstar to go about his career, Paul George will be following in Dwight Howard's, Carmelo Anthony's, and Chris Paul's footsteps as he brings trade drama and rumors around him prior to this next season. According to Adrian Wojnarowski of The Vertical, Paul George told the Indiana Pacers this past Sunday that he will test free agency and he prefers to sign with the Los Angeles Lakers. Magic Johnson definitely seemed happy about this as he tweeted, God is so good in response to this. Well, 
I think it's safe to say it was in response to this. ESPN's Ramona Shelburne reported that the Lakers do not currently intend to part with any of their young assets to trade for Paul George, which in my personal opinion is brilliant because gutting out your roster like the Knicks did for Carmelo Anthony would only yield the same result that the Knicks had once they traded for Carmelo Anthony. The Lakers have a very promising roster but have yet to find a star, and waiting a year to sign Paul George in free agency can yield a lot of benefits for the Lakers other than maintaining their assets. Another year gives Julius Randle, Jordan Clarkson, D'Angelo Russell, and Brandon Ingram more room to grow and develop in Luke Walton's offense. However, an exciting suitor has entered the mix, the Cleveland Cavaliers. The Cavaliers are rumored to be in the very early stages of Paul George trade talks. Steve Kyler of Basketball Insiders believes that Paul George will probably not sign a long-term deal if he was traded anywhere but the Lakers, stating that the only way Paul George will stay is if they win the NBA championship and LeBron James opts to stay. Which is also very fascinating because LeBron James to Los Angeles rumors have been dominating headlines since the end of the NBA Finals. So a one year rental would make a lot of sense for the Cavaliers if they believe LeBron James is going to head to LA anyway. Regardless, the Pacers have absolutely no leverage in this situation since Paul George's stock has fallen as low as it possibly can be. Most teams wouldn't be interested in renting Paul George if they know he is leaving anyways. And any team that would be in contention to sign Paul George would probably wait until he is a free agent so they won't have to part with any assets. Now, in other news, the Lakers are also attempting to add another first round lottery pick in the NBA draft in hopes of adding perimeter help. Ramona Shelburne reported that the Lakers have engaged with two teams ahead of Thursday's draft. Though it's unclear how far along talks have become, the Lakers currently hold the number 2 and 28 pick in the first round and are widely expected to select UCLA point guard Lonzo Ball with the second pick, meaning that they would likely use number 28 and another asset to move up, which probably includes packaging the 28th pick with either D'Angelo Russell, Julius Randle, or Jordan Clarkson. Maybe the Lakers are trying to add an additional pick to package for Paul George after all. Anything can be possible at this point. We all know that the NBA is filled with smoke screens and no one is going to let their intentions be known from the get-go. Well, unless if you're Paul George. Uh, Paul George has been repeating himself like over and over again that he's going to leave the Pacers. So I guess he's an exception, okay? But anything can be possible at this point. The Phoenix Suns are also discussing moving up in the draft with both the Lakers and the Boston Celtics. Now I want to ask Celtic fans a, a question. First of all, I think you guys are crazy. Who the hell burns a Markel Fultz jersey? Who the hell makes a Markel Fultz jersey just to burn it? If you guys don't know what I'm talking about, be sure to check my previous video in the description down below. It's like the very first thing you'll see. A Celtic fan literally burned a Boston Celtics Markel Fultz jersey. You guys are insane, okay? I want to ask you guys a question. Would you like a double trade back, meaning a trade back from the first uh, overall pick to the third overall pick, which is what happened with the Sixers. Would you guys want to trade back from the third pick to the fourth pick with the Suns? The Boston Celtics have been rumored to be interested in either Josh Jackson or Jason Tatum. And if they like Jason Tatum, then a double trade back would make sense. Or would you be outraged at Danny Ainge for continuing the stockpile first round draft picks with nothing to show for it? Now, to conclude this episode, and man, this is really, really interesting. We don't see this that often. Kevin Durant has been responding to multiple trash talking fans on Twitter. Why anyone would subject themselves to this, I have no personal idea, man. But now that Kevin Durant is officially a champion, he has taken a fairly long victory lap on Twitter. The Golden State Warriors star took to Twitter on Sunday night to respond to anyone calling him out, leaving some very interesting tweets. Now, personally, I don't get Kevin Durant's angle. Is he insecure about his decision to leave the Thunder for the Warriors still? Does he want to know what people think of him now that he won a championship? Or does he need to be validated? Either way, I won't lie, I do not understand why a basketball player like Kevin Durant would do this to himself. Because with all due respect to Kevin Durant, he probably won't find the nicest tweets to engage with. The tweets range from justification of him leaving OKC for Golden State, to him justifying why he is spending his night on Twitter interacting with anyone that would tweet at him. I have to give the man props though, some of these responses are in extremely intriguing and as a basketball fan, I've always wondered what he'd respond to, your ring was given not earned. 
although he didn't seem to exactly respond to it now that's going to be it for today's episode guys and before i leave i wanted to give you guys a huge shout out this series has been reviving my channel we've been getting so much support and i'm definitely going to continue it if you have any analysis be sure to either tweet it at me comment it or tweet me a video and you may see a video of yourself in the next episode if you guys enjoyed the content be sure to subscribe and leave any feedback as to how i can improve the previous episode actually gave me like a lot of crap for you know having a dirty camera lens so you know i had to go out bust out the windex and big <laughs> crap is it still god damn it come on man come on yeah it's not professional come on mike uh, uh, all right.